Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mike's Microbe Peeps. This week, we're peeping at the Hydra. The Hydra is a freshwater multicellular creature that can grow up to about 10 millimeters. So it's gigantic compared to the microbes that we usually look at on this channel. When we look at the Hydra's body, we see that it's basically a tube consisting of a foot at one end, which is secured to the substrate using a sticky glue-like substance, and a mouth at the other end that is surrounded by up to 12 tentacles. As you can see in this next clip, a hydra is able to extend and contract its body to a degree that would make Stretch Armstrong envious. Also, the hydra has an awesome ability to regenerate body parts. In fact, if you cut a hydra into several pieces, every piece will generate a new head, a new foot, or both and become a new hydra. That's pretty awesome. Now, you might be wondering why the first hydra in this video was sort of a clear color, and the one we're looking at now is bright green. That's because some species of hydra have formed a symbiotic relationship with an algae called chlorella. The hydra provides the algae with protection, and the algae provide the hydra with nutrition from the sugar byproduct of photosynthesis. So this hydra is bright green because he has thousands of algae cells living inside of him. But that's not the only type of symbiotic relationship that some hydras form. Check out this next video clip. If you look closely, this hydra looks like it's covered in tiny bugs, which are actually single-celled ciliates. But how do they creep all over the hydra when a hydra is covered with thousands of stinging cells? Well, it seems that just like a clownfish is immune to the stinging cells of the anemone, the ciliates are immune to the hydra stinging cells. And they form this relationship where they feed on the waste regurgitated from the hydra, or they may clean the hydra of bacteria and other material. And in exchange, the hydra provides protection from predators for the ciliates. Okay, so I mentioned that the hydra's tentacles are covered in stinging cells. Let me show you what those cells look like up close. This poor hydra here got a little bit smashed by my cover slip, but at least that means he'll be still so we can take a really close look at those cells on the tentacles. We're going to start zooming in here. And when we get to about 400 times magnification, you're going to notice something that looks almost like sesame seeds on a cheeseburger bun right there. You see that? Those are the stinging cells called nidocytes. The presence of these nidocytes means that the hydra is classified in with such animals as corals, sea anemone, and jellyfish. When a hydra's prey animal makes contact with one of these stinging cells, a dart-like thread containing neurotoxins is explosively discharged, which paralyzes the prey to be eaten. In fact, we're going to see a hydra attack, paralyze, and ingest its prey next week on Monsters of the Microverse Part 2, right here on this channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video enough to give it a like, and be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Microbe Peeps.